Hello, it's Dee with Deesa's Photography, and I figured for this Photoshop Friday I would do something a little different and show you a video of actually editing before and after. I'm going to edit this silhouette shot that I shot just recently. Um, I shot this in JPEG, but I opened up sorry, <laughs> all my images in camera roll and do minor adjustments in there before bringing them into Photoshop. So I'm going to, I'm in Bridge, I'm going to right click, open in camera raw. If it was a raw image, you should just double click it and ACR will pop up, which is Adobe Camera Raw. And if you have a JPEG, it will not automatically do it, so you want to right click and hit open in camera raw, but um, in Bridge. If you are in Elements, you'll have to go up to um, in Elements, open as, find the file you want, and then on the bottom there's a choice for different drop downs or different file formats. And you want to do the drop down and find Camera Raw as an option, and it should open it up in Camera Raw for you. Um, I shot this one for the sole purpose of making it a silhouette shot. Um, Right now it's kind of a partial, so like I can go either way. If I went up my exposure, it would just be a... I have my highlights turned on, let's turn them off. It'd just be a shot with a blown background. But I'm going to go down exposure, because I wanted to make a silhouette. I also always pull... I'll pull the highlights down... To, well, maybe not in this one. We'll leave them as is. Pull the shadows down, pull the blacks down a bit, so it really deepens up my silhouette. On silhouettes, I go up in my clarity, no more than 10. I'll bump my vibrance up a little bit, and even my saturation, just a tad. And I'm, I'm actually going to cool down the white bounce just a bit and add a little bit of magenta, and that's just a personal preference. Uh, this is my sharpening or whatever, or my noise reduction sharpening. I don't ever touch sharpening in here. Um, we're going to... I shot this at 1600 and on my camera it starts to grain up a little bit. So we're going to go to about 30, 35 for my luminance to smooth it out. You can zoom in and look, but I... that's where I... at 1600 I'll pop up there. And once I'm finished in here, here's what it looked like before. Here's what I got before, sorry, a little lag. And this was just after doing, come on now, there we go. Just those minor adjustments in ACR. Click in, click open image. <laughs> just give it a minute to open up in Photoshop. Alright, the first thing I'm going to do is go to my crop tool, click straighten, and straighten this horizon out just a bit. And this is a center comp because that's how I rolled uh, that day. So we'll change the composition slightly. And then I don't have to worry about getting rid of all that jazz over there. And I don't mind this. I'll fix this in a minute. I'm going to double click it, let it crop it. And I'm going to duplicate the background. And I'm going to work on this one with my um, spot healing brush. I have it set to content aware. And we're just going to let Photoshop see what it does with all these little um, poles and the weeds that are growing out. Just gonna keep going through and see how much it will fix. And whatever it doesn't fix, I'm gonna go through and use the um, cloning tool and fix that up real quick. 
that was a telephone line, but I can't remember. <laughs> oh, didn't mind you do that. Sorry. I moved this. Let's turn it back. There we go. Alright. And we're going to zoom in a little closer so I can actually really see what's going on. And um, Photoshop does pretty good. I mean, obviously it's not always accurate, but that's because it's just trying to use whatever is around the spot to figure out what to replace it with. And sometimes it's close to edges and I can't tell what exactly it's supposed to be. Like this is it's having issues right here because of all those lines that were there. To see, I think that is part of that telephone line. Another one here. Sorry, I paused it for a second, and I was just still using the um, clone brush and try to get the edges. slow and I figured it want to wait forever for it to load the detailing on some of that. And I just am using my or left bracket, right bracket to um <laughs> to get my um, brush down in size quickly. That's pretty cleaned up. I think that's just was the cloud right there. That one was kind of funky. Go back to fit screen. That was uh, the original. And that was after. And I have this edge right here. And since I have Photoshop, I use um, the little magic wand. Choose the white area. If it just a second. I just had to turn my tolerance down because it was trying to pick up. If you find your magic um, brush is picking up other colors, it's because probably your tolerance is up too high. Um, and go to Edit, Fill, and choose Content Aware. If I was in Elements, which I have, I just don't use this much anymore, I would just create a new layer, uh, grab a cloning brush. I will set it to 90, actually usually 100, but we'll do 100. And I'm going to grab, or er, use the alt key and grab an area way down here so that it doesn't look as repetitive. And that top line, or the horizon line. But since this cloud is right here, I want to extend that over, so I'm going to alt right there, and just extend, alt, and extend, increase my brush size, alt, and 
I would just put my brush size on this till I get it to look on the edge what I want to look like. And if it looks repetitive, I will just go back in and use the clotting brush to fix that up. Alright, there we go. So really quick with a comb brush. And you could also, like I said, use magic wand here, edit, fill, content aware. Let's just give it a second. And there we go. That's what it's it's decide. And like I said, it's not foolproof. As you can tell with that area right there not looking as nice. So I just I'll just use what I cloned. And since I'm going to use um, the actions from Workflow Wonders, I'm going to flatten it beforehand because they all create a um, sharpening layer by using your background layer. And since I want to also sharp or use this air included and without those little um, poles and all that junk right there because it would sharpen those up and have a really weird texture. <laughs> For this one I wanted a, a um, bold matte finish so I used uh, Deep Enrich and Matte Enrich. So we'll just run them really quick. And Deep Enrich, if you have it on your faces you want to mask it off but I have a silhouette shot so it works perfect with it. And there is Deep Enrich really quick what it looks like. As you can tell, it's really deep. I'm going to go ahead and run Matte and Rich. And that's with Matte and Rich on top of it. Um, I did not have, these are at 100%. I'm going to reduce deep to about under 60, 57, 58. Matte and Rich to about 75-ish. And they both have sharpening layers. That's if you just wanted to use one by itself, it would still sharpen it up for you. When you're um, doing what I'm doing, which is multiplying, or multiplying is not what I wanted to use, but you're um, using them together, I like to turn uh, one of the sharpened layers off or reduce it really low. So we'll just turn this one off. And that is the finished image with the two actions around top of it. And if it would let me and not mess up for me, it'd be great. Alright, so that was after that. Let me go pull it up to show you the original. Yeah, here's the after. And here was the before. And as you can tell, I really like the after much more. It's more my style. And here's actually well, I'll be posting, but you can see the actual comparison before and after. And this edit pump would normally take me about five minutes if I didn't ramble on and talk forever. And my computer wasn't acting extremely slow tonight. <laughs> Thank you very much. Hope you enjoyed.